All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Armored Strabag at Trade Group, and it is Monday, October 22nd. So, um, you know, I'm going to say, as I'm looking at uh, CDNS, by the way, which had some good earnings report. It's an application software names. They beat on the top line, bottom line. Guidance was great. So good earnings report there. But um, basically, this video, I'm going to talk about what I, you know, talked about uh, towards the end of last week. Kind of just in a wait and see mode right now, uh, trading very lightly and uh, just waiting for things to kind of, uh, you know, awaken a little bit. And this week we have a huge week of earnings. And I think this week, uh, personally, I, you know, this video, of course, is for information purposes only, but I'm treading lightly. Why? Because we're getting so many data points that are out. This is not a great time, regardless if the market is, go is going up or going down. Uh, this is not a great time time to put on swing trades, you know, multi-day trades. Uh, you know, right now we're just not getting much follow through to the downside or to the upside. Uh, maybe some sectors, some sectors are really getting beaten up. Uh, some areas that are weak of the market, and some of the stronger areas are just kind of flip-flopping from day to day. So that's not really a great time to trade. And this is all things that we've talked about for the last couple of days. So it's kind of just uh, stay the course and um, you know wait till we get through to the end of this week, and uh, we get through more more. Uh, big earnings reports and then you could kind of and then I can kind of see which names I want to um, I want to buy after they report earnings uh, you know not to say I'm not going to put on a catalyst trade from uh, from time to time um, I put on a small Apple trade today although Apple's another one that um, you know looked great around midday but uh, you know gave gave back the profit still finished up on the day but um, you know not what you want to see basically so just just a a week kind of midday on from about 12, 12 o'clock on just turned and, and went the other way. Try to rally a couple times, but you could see just the momentum is not there right now. So you kind of have to, um, you know, this is a catalyst type trade just for the week because they report earnings next week. But um, you just kind of want to, you know, um, try not to force too many trades just because you're not doing anything. I know sometimes, you know, if you're in, if, if you're in the Tribeca trade group, uh, room and, um, or if, you know, you're, you're an active trader, you know, it's, it's not easy to just stay patient, um, and just wait for, for better setups and to maybe scalp for some overnight trades. A couple traders in the room played, uh, Baba from yesterday, which was really nice. I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, China, which is now up 7%. So, you know, this, this is good. I mean, they, they it really, I don't think got much, got the right press coverage today, but, um, you know, they announced stimulus and I, I didn't see that really being covered um, very much. You know, I saw them talk about what they've been saying now for a couple of days is that they're going to be supportive, but uh, they actually had some measures that they put into place. I guess maybe some were expected, but uh, they're unveiling uh, tax cuts. So, you know, that's a good thing. And, and, and so the Shanghai has now been up 7% in two days. Um, if you look at some of these areas, you know, they're becoming kind of value, value areas. Uh, if you look at Alibaba, maybe not, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. But if you look at this weekly bar, you know, we are holding support there. That's 138.20, which is what I said last week. Uh, so a nice day there, and it didn't really give back. It pretty much stayed where it, where it opened, uh, up about 4% on the day. So we'll see. Uh, a couple things to also note, uh, which we had in our weekend newsletter, is that... Um, a couple of the Chinese ETFs are seeing inflows. And you can see that with the MCHI ETF. I think this is a little bit better. Pro I like this ETF better than FXI uh, because FXI only covers so many names. Uh, MC MCHI is a little bit more diversified. So you, do, you are working off of a double bottom here. Let's see if it holds. Keep in mind, we are still way buried. These are sell signals that happen back here. But yeah, there's a little bit of buying. You could see the volume come in here on the lows. So... Um, that would be great if there were some other international areas to get involved in uh, besides the U.S. And, you know, I kind of think overall my uh, what I'm sensing is just, you know, people really uh, uh, when you take a step back and think about it. Right. Interest rates have moved up. Uh, not huge, but they've moved up and I'm going to go over the home builders and and uh, the banks and what, what's been going on with them. But, uh, you know, people and, and big institutions change around their portfolio 
once the conditions change. And I think that's basically what we've got going on here in, in multiple different places. It's not just one party, but this has been going on now for a couple months, but I think it's accelerated a little bit the last two weeks. So it's a little bit of my explanation is that as market conditions change, uh, I don't think it necessarily means people are exiting, uh, you know, completely exiting the equities. There's just changing around their portfolio. Maybe they don't want as much exposure to equities right now, and maybe they don't want as much exposure to growth right now. So, you know, I've been detailing some other areas of the market, which I think are uh, that, you know, investors may go into. I still like the Walmart chart. I did start a trade in this one. Walmart doesn't report for a while, but I think it's forming a cup and handle. Um, still needs to get going a little bit higher for that to be confirmed, but um, it's it's basically right there. Uh, so that's Walmart was flat today. Um, I guess you could call that a little bit of outperformance. So let me go into a couple of the real uh, the problem areas of the market. Uh, I'll start with the KRE. Notice where we're getting to in the regional banking ETF bottom of value on the weekly chart. So also if you look at this on the daily chart. You know, this is this is really getting oversold. Um, again, it doesn't mean that so there's going to be a trend reversal, but it probably is due for a bounce. I was hoping that this virgin point of control down here would be taken out today. It was not. So it may have, you know, may go down lower tomorrow and then, and then may, may be up for a bounce. Um, one of the things that I noticed was there's definitely some liquidating going on in a couple of the, um, the ETFs. Uh, you may not be familiar with this ETF, but it's called VFH. Uh, this is the Vanguard, so it's very similar to XLF, but um, but look at the volume that happened today in this thing. Well, there's two ETFs. There's another one that's called KBWB, traded about five times normal volumes, mostly in the beginning of the day. So liquidation in this, this is the old BKX index that you might be familiar with. Um, it's the money center banks, so larger banks. And then if you look at VFH, which is Vanguard Financials, you know, and and the the reason why these are used uh, a lot of times is because the um, the expense ratio is lower, so they're more long only product. But look at the volume here. So this thing traded eight times normal volumes today. So there's definitely a shift out of financials that uh, that was taking place today. Uh, the other area that looks atrocious is home builders, which we were talking about. Uh, we had a nice conversation about this in the trading room, and that's really you know what we try to do is to kind of have a discussion about. You know, hey, is this thing really getting oversold? Is there any value in this group yet? Um, I'm looking at for the home builders. Um, keep in mind, I think Pulte reports tomorrow morning. But um, there is a, a version point of control. I think that needs to be taken out. But yeah, I mean, these things are getting really oversold. So they might be ripe for a bounce. I think one more day for ITB, for me anyway, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But one more day in ITB and KRE could set up for a bounce trade, not a swing trade, but just a, a bounce trade as these things are, are really have been moving down quickly to to uh, to the downside. So, you know, this is not uh, this is not this is not bullish to see these things go down. I mean, you could debate, you know, what's been going on with the home builders. Obviously, rates have been rising. Uh, I think prices are still sticky. Uh, sellers are reluctant to drop their prices. Um, I always go back to, and this is my own personal argument, is that you know the, the generation that should be buying houses, the millennials, are they buying a lot of houses? It doesn't seem like they're that interested in, in home ownership as maybe some of the prior uh, generations have been. So I don't know. That's my take. I, you know, you can have a conversation with some millennials and see, uh, you know, if that's that's something that they are interested in as as previous, you know, uh, people in their twenties and thirties. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the if 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 that's part of part of the problem here. But clearly, this is a major breakdown. Um, price will be back to all the way back to I guess beginning 2017 levels. You know, it's taken out this whole uh, whole rally. So I mentioned KRE has some support down there on the weekly chart. ITB. Um, also has that coming as well. So this has really been accelerating to the downside, but you've got some decent support uh, that's coming in here. Um, another area that was uh, that did come back a little bit from the lows was the biotech ETF. Uh, this one also is going to be coming into some support, a little bit different picture. It hasn't gone through value, but you've got some support at 8049. 
uh, if you go scale into the daily chart, so again, I'm covering the, the, the bad areas first. This did take out a, a virgin point of control. So again, why, you know, why do I keep talking about these? Because really once we're trading outside of value, price will often seek out where there was a lot of uh, buyers and sellers, a lot of, you know, a high volume area that hasn't been revisited, kind of like a gap when you fill a gap. Um, you know, there's one argument by some technique some by uh, some technicians argue that all gaps will be filled um, so it's kind of the same same concept here but you do have that fill that happened there in xbi all right so those were your worst performers um, i talked about the china chinese etf so i guess i did start with some of the positives but yeah i mean china i think is that's that's very um i think good news for china to start coming back again we have no um you know no uh um deal or anything like that with with china for tariffs so that still remains to be seen but um it's nice that they're more in, a, in an accommodative uh fiscal policy right now uh also cyber stocks did okay today retail actually did um okay the xrt etf um, that outperformed finished up one percent for the day um option activity still kind of a mess um generally that's what it is around earnings season as well um, but you could see Netflix, there was some call buying into this, uh, some weekly calls going up in this. Um, a few other trades. They did go after the Chinese Internet ETF this, this morning, uh, right after the open. Uh, they also bought some ASHR, which is the Shanghai. But uh, you could see that that came up on the list a couple times for the day. Um, Netflix weekly calls were active. Uh, let me take a look at this OLED chart. Really not speaking to me, but um, they have been coming in like right around the open the last few days and buying some OLED. Uh, and that's it. Just a lot of other small orders that we're seeing. Kind of like we saw last week, a lot of small bites. So, um, you know, the bottom line here is, uh, you know, give it a little bit of time let's see how these earnings results come out uh, and let's see what emerge what leaders emerge you know it might be something that you're not thinking of that comes out from the earnings and you know something that might d decide to carry the ball in terms of a group of stocks that might be the new outperformers so um don't you know uh, i would say you know you don't have to force trades in here it's just not the right environment to do it let the trades come to you uh, you don't have to go crazy trying to look for the next trade. It's going to hit you on the top of the head when you see it. All right, guys. So that's it uh, for today's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.